You know the vibes, we are back with another episode. This is the Hoop Genius Podcast brought to you by NBA 2K22. Myself, Mo Mootsi, alongside three times NBA champion BJ Armstrong. And today, Oof. we got a special guest in the building. None it's other. Hot. It's hot. Oh, oh, the heat's coming up, B, because we got it's none hot. other than a senior NBA insider for Yahoo Sports, one of the goats in this media game, Mr. Mm. Chris Haynes. How are you doing today, sir? Mm. Thank you for joining us. Man, thanks for having me, man. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. It really is. No doubt. Man, Chris. Doing some big I, things, man. So I'm, I'm excited to be on. Chris and I, we go way back. Normally, you know, we ease into a conversation, but I can't ease into it because this man is the best in the business. That's and nice. it's a real treat. Real treat for him to come spend time with us. So, Chris, I got to get right to it. There is a lot of chit chatter about. Russell Westbrook okay. and what's going on and being an ex-player I have my thoughts about it but I just want to get right to it Chris what's your take on what's going on with this relationship with the media with the fans and Westbrook because now it's getting to a point where I think it's really affecting the way he plays it's affecting you know outside of the game and now it's not just happening in on the court, it's happening outside of the court. Chris, can you share with us, because you're there, you're covering him, you've covered him his, basically his whole career. Can you share with us what's going on with this Russell Westbrook situation and the Lakers? Well, first I want to start off by saying, um, you know, I don't condone in any way, shape or form, death threats to him, his family, his wife, his kids, like, if that's going on, that is repulsive and needs to be investigated, and those folks need to be uh, reprimanded. Um, that There's no place for that at all, regardless of how your favorite player or favorite team is playing, bad or good. That shouldn't happen. Um, so I want to put that out there. Now, the other component of this is it, it's tough watching Russ not just play, but it's tough for me. It was tough for me watching him do that press conference last night mm -hmm. because we, we don't see that from Russ. You know, usually he's a guy that's reserved and he's heard every name and trick in the book leading up to this point. And he's never really addressed anybody. He's never taken the approach where he's going to bring up whoever – calling him names, calling his teammates names. And so for him to really go in depth, I have to applaud him because he, he really is being vulnerable at this stage and saying that this is bothering me. Um, this is bothering my family. He's never done that before. So I, I give him credit for being vulnerable. Um, the part that, that, that I struggle with is that one thing that he did say was, you know, the, the West Brick name that people have been calling him it seems like it's been even louder this season. Um, he played against the Spurs the other night and he addressed a fan during the game, a fan or fan saying, hey, hey, respect my name. Then right after that, in the press conference that we all we all saw, he says that moving forward, you know, he's going to address anybody who has something to say about his name, who's going to you know, mispronounce his name, mimic his name. And if that's his approach, it's not the right approach because I think that's going to be, I think that's going to open up the floodgates for many more fans to shout out West Brick. Um, West Brick is struggling. And I think a lot of people live for his struggling moments because I think the way that he's always carried himself in front of the media. Um, I, I'll just bring up, you know, in the past, he's been real dismissive of media. He's been, you know, he just has certain antics. I think a lot of people don't like the way he handles himself on the court, where it's the rock of, rock of baby motion that he does, screams in, you know, in people's faces and, you know, all, all that type of stuff. And I think over the, over the years, it's just rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And maybe even media as well. And, he was able to say what he wanted to say or sometimes not even say things. When he was in Oklahoma City, he was shielded a lot. He didn't have to talk every day. 
Uh, but when you were in that purple and gold, mm. when you were representing the Lakers, BJ, you know, like when you represent the Chicago Bulls, it was different, right. BJ, when you went to go. Golden State wasn't Golden State back then when you would play for Golden State. Charlotte Hornets wasn't, you know, it wasn't Chicago. It was Toronto wasn't Chicago. It's different. When you're when you represent an iconic franchise, a franchise that expects greatness every single day, and they expect championships every single season. Your response cannot be that after the game, I go home to my family, I forget about this. That can be true. That can be great perspective because there is life outside of basketball, but you're setting yourself up with the way that you're kind of dismissive of the basketball game. You're dismissive of the season. You're saying you didn't really have any expectations coming into this year. I don't know if I believe that or not, but you say all these things. And meanwhile, you're struggling, not just struggling. You're struggling like historically struggling and wearing a Laker jersey. It's going to compound the issue. And I just don't think I hope he I hope he's not dead set on addressing everybody that calls on West Brick because I don't think that's going to stop. I think heckling is part of the game. Obviously, there are certain heckles that is not, are not called for, no racially sensitive things like that. But I, I'm concerned. I'm really concerned for him. And I, I don't like seeing him like this because you can really tell this is bothering him. But I do give him credit, like I said in my open. The fact that he is vulnerable, he's giving us, he's showing us um, behind the scenes of what's happening, how they're being affected because he's never done that before. I just hope that he handles it moving forward a little bit better than he did leading up to this point. I mean, when I look at a situation, I kind of have to feel bad for Russ because although he has struggled this season, the whole Lakers roster outside of perhaps LeBron James has really struggled this season. But for some reason, He's kind of the face of it. He's the scapegoat. He's the one that they all blame for the struggles in LA. When really, you know, personally, I look at the construction of the roster. Russell Westbrook right now, they say he turns the ball over too much. He's averaging the same amount of turnovers as last year. Oh, he's missing shots. He's averaging almost the same field goal percentage. So you knew what you were getting when you traded for him. You can't be mad that he's not overnight transformed his game into a spot up three point shooter and a lockdown defender. You you knew what Russell Westbrook was. So I feel like it's kind of unfair that Russell is taking the blame for all of this, but with this situation going on as it's going, what do you see as the next steps for this? Because they didn't trade him at a trade deadline when there was reportedly an offer on the table or a, a conversation on the table for John Wall and the Houston Rockets, but he's got that player option for next year. I'm assuming he opts in, and do you see him playing that in LA, or, or what's the future for this situation? Because it's quite clearly turning into a toxic environment for him to play in and for all of the interactions around it. Well, before I answer that question, I want to get to what you said in your open there um, about people blaming Russ. There's no doubt about it. He's the scapegoat in this situation. The defense is horrible. The roster is poorly constructed. All of those things. The problem still lies is that I don't think Russ handles the media. I don't think the the way he answers the questions, I think that is what's getting to people. Yes, he's notorious for not being a good shooter. We've known that. He's a turnover prone guy. That's fine. And he was getting praise and he got MVP, Mr. Triple Double, all that stuff. But it's totally different Nobody's watching every Oklahoma City Thunder game. Nobody's watching every Washington Wizards game. People watch the Lakers. So the spotlight is on you. So no longer can you have those subpar games and then go to the media and say, well, look, you know, I'm, I'm just going to do me and I play the game and I forget about it. I move on. You can do that in OKC because a successful season in OKC is 55, 50 wins. Successful season in Washington, 50 to 55 wins. That's not successful with the Lakers. Ultimately, it's about did we get the chip. So that's why I'm saying that Yeah, he's contributed to this. It's easy for him to be a target. Yes, Anthony Davis is the blame, being injury prone. Yes, LeBron James is the blame as well. He needs to adapt. 
But you know LeBron's resume. Like LeBron get called LeBum, Le GM. He gets called all these names. But one thing you know about LeBron is that most times he's going to, you know, he's going to put you in a position to win a championship. And that's all he's about. Russ tells you, he's been saying it for years, championship doesn't define my greatness. And while that is true, when you're wearing a Laker jersey and you're struggling historically, you're going to be the one that people pick on. So that's why I think it's important the way that Russ phrases his his responses. I think it's I think it's really an integral part of what should be in player when players are being groomed and developed throughout the rookie um, symposiums and yeah, you know transition. how to answer, yeah transitional programs mm -hmm. how to answer questions how to you know pivot and all like that is very important because you make and get away with that in small markets and that's why I think a lot of star players they feel like they can handle it because they've been so successful so long. But when you get to playing for the Lakers, the Bulls, uh, Boston Celtics, Miami Heat, you can't talk that, hey. Yeah, different ball game. It's a different ball game. Yeah. But to answer your, your latter question, um, you know, look, I, obviously, I, you know, he has to opt in. I think his, his uh, player option is $47 million or something like that mm, next season. So crazy. He's going to opt in. But I think – I don't, I don't see a scenario where he comes back. I, I just don't. I think um, there was a trade on the table for John Wall, but the Rockets wanted a first-round pick included. The Lakers said no. I think you got to revisit that because while I don't know necessarily that John Wall is pound for pound better than Russ, but I think he may be a better fit um, with the roster. How much better, I don't know, but you got to do something. And I, I think Russ is in a situation where – he probably wouldn't want to be around, you know, himself as well. You know, Chris, you made some great point. And look, I know we could go on and on, but let me ask you this. What makes this really complicated? You know, from my viewpoint as a former player, former executive, is that Russell Westbrook's home is the city of Los Angeles. Yeah. And it's one thing to get booed on the road. It's one thing to get booed knowing that, you know what? I didn't want to be here anyway, you know. He's from Los Angeles. I believe his wife is from Los Angeles. I know his home and his family is from Los Angeles. How complicated do you think that alone? Because that cuts a little different. And I, I've had clients who've played at home. Derrick Rose was from Chicago. And it's one, like I said, it's one thing to get booed somewhere else. But when you get booed from where you at, to hear, and I, I don't know this, but to hear someone at Magic Johnson's stature, who Russell grew up watching, to get on national television and say what he said, whether it was warranted or not, how much do you think that's a factor in why this has been, this is affecting him in the way that it is, whether he wants to admit it or not? Because I think we all can see, we know Russ. You and I know Russ personally. Yeah. So uh, can you can you just expand on that and kind of take a little deep dive in that into what you think is really going on from that perspective? Yeah, there, there, are, not, there are not many LA superstars that get to come back and play for the Lakers and do great things. You know, most great LA players wound, wound up on other teams. And so it's a special moment. DeMar DeRozan. He wanted to play for the Lakers this year. Things didn't work out. Uh, the Lakers pivoted to Russ. Uh, he wanted to come back home, and it would have been a special occasion for him. But, B, the point that you make, like, yes, it is it, – it does add more misery to the situation, the fact that these are his home – these are his home fans. This is his home mm -hmm. crowd. Um, the fact uh, – but I will say this. Whether this is his home crowd or not, this is his home team, and he has no – typically, if you're a player that's struggling, you only got to deal with the heckling on the road. Right. He has no break. It's at home and on the road. And so that makes things even more tough. And then he said – you know, he said that he – you know, he's scared – not scared. He, it's, it's uncomfortable bringing his family and kids to the game. 
here in the heckles, the West Bricks. He don't, he don't want his kids listening to that stuff. And that's tough, man. It, it's really tough. Um, like, and that's where I feel for him in that regard as a right. human, yes. you know, as a, as a human being, as a man and a, and a father. That's why I feel for him in that regard. He's never been through this. I, I, I talk like, I've had, I had a, so I had a, a conversation with Russ. This was, it might've been a month ago. And me and Russ have always been cordial, cool, but we've never had like a really an extended conversation. And um, he came to Sacramento and I went to their game. And I asked him in the press conference, I said, hey, Russ, like, this is uncommon. Like you're getting booed by your home fans. Like I'm just scrolling through social media. I'm seeing Laker fans just kill them, kill them, kill them. And I'm like, is this any different to you? Like, do you feel any different? This is about a month and a half ago. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, I've been going through this my whole life. No. Nah. Right. And so he finishes the press conference and then he comes to me. He's like, Chris, you really think this is any different? I said, no. I said, I think you misunderstood. Me. I, I said, I'm asking you not if you've been booed your whole life, I'm talking about from your home crowd. Is this the worst? He said, oh, yeah, I did hear you wrong. He said, yeah, this is the worst. But he said, but look, he said, I enjoy being home. He said, I enjoy spending time with my kids. And he's like, I'm enjoying this part of work, like being in my home city, not, not have to go anywhere. He said, so it's bigger. It's bigger than basketball. And as a man, I respect that. Like, I, I respect that answer. I respect that response because basketball is not, not all. The only thing I would say, like, if I was in his ear, I would say, bro, as a media member, as somebody who's watched this for over a decade and watched different reactions come off of different responses, I don't know that that's the right response to say we're in a Laker jersey mm. and the way that you're struggling. Now, if that's that's how you feel, that's how you feel. And if that's if you're just that person that, look, I'm going to say, I'm going to keep it 100. I'm going to say how I feel and what it is. Okay then you have to take what comes with that. I, I just don't I, – there's just certain things I, I just would have handled differently if I was him. Do you think he would have been under less pressure had this been with the LA Clippers then? Because they don't have oh, – even though yeah. they're in the big hell market, yeah. they don't have the fan base. Hell yeah. It's, it's not – no, it's not – yeah. Any other place, any other place aside from maybe Boston, Lakers, Golden State, New any York. team that – yeah, any team, like even some of the new, newer teams like Milwaukee or something, like any teams that has championship aspirations right now, like you're expected to be, like anything, there's about there's about four teams that is either championship or bust. That's it. The rest of the teams, the rest of 26, their su success is defined in different areas, in different ways. Success may be a first-round playoff berth. Success may be getting to the conference finals. There's about four teams that is championship or bust. Lakers are one of them. Championship or bust. Regardless of the roster construction, regardless of the injuries, championship or bust. So when you under that under that limelight and you want that limelight, because most players say they do, then there's certain things that come with it. Like there are certain things you can say in OKC in Memphis that you can't say being a part of the Lakers, being a part of Chicago Bulls when they're when it's a championship bust type of a season. So that's I think that's why I mean, no, there's no thing. That's why Russ is being targeted more so than everybody else because he comes off as dismissive, comes off as basketball is not that important. It's a tool, it's a vehicle that I use to do other things in the community, which I applaud him. But for diehard Laker fans who pay their hard-earned money to come watch you play and watch success, that's not flying with them. they like, look, bro, get us to the championship, win a title, and go do your community stuff. We'll respect you that way. We don't respect mm -hmm. you just using our, our platform just to do that <laughs> stuff, <laughs> and we're not going anywhere. You know, we don't want to take up too much of your time. We know you've got TNT to do. Um, so my last question for you, Chris, is for this Lakers season, just personally, do you see it as a right off, or do you still hold out hope that because the team has LeBron James on it and Anthony Davis went healthy as one of the top talents in the league, there is any hope at all of them trying to turn things around? Or is that book, is that a chapter that needs to be closed and focus on the future moving forwards? Look, I think, uh, 
at the end of the day, they are still expected. Like LeBron is he's expecting to compete for a championship. Mm. Obviously, obviously, the situation they're in, they're 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 on the verge of not even being in the play-in tournament mm-hmm. scenario. <laughs> But with that being said, look, everybody is going to be judged. I don't think anybody can right now say that they're they're capable of turning it around because I think AD, if he gets back, is going to be around the playoff time. Like, how effective can he be sitting out all that time and then coming back in the playoffs? Like, that doesn't make sense. You know, I, he he's not Superman, and his injuries have shown he's not. So, look, at the end of the day, people are going to lose jobs off based off of this season. Oh wow! I, you, you know, I mean, that's just that's just the way it, that's just the way it is. I, I I can't see it's it's difficult for me to see a scenario where Frank Vogel is going to be brought back. Uh, that you have to evaluate Rob Palinka. You have to evaluate him. It's hard to see a scenario where Russ um, where Russ is brought back as well. So, look, I don't see a championship happening, but they're still expected to get there, even with all their faults and everything. Period, because you can't waste a LeBron time. And 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 then the other thing is this: playing with LeBron, like that, even heightens the expectations there. You know, it, it's it's tough, man. You you got the Laker component, and then you got the LeBron component added mm-hmm. to it. Double <laughs> you know doubles the fan base with all the LeBron stands coming along too. It's tough, man. It's tough, man. And, and third, the third star has always struggled. It's always struggled. Yep. Chris Bosh, Kevin Love. You know, they've always struggled, um, but those guys found a way. Chris Bosh found a way to make it work. Kevin Love found a way to make it work. Russ, I, I, I don't know that he's going to have time to find it. Chris, I can sit here with you. Can you just do one thing? We're going to end this. You promised to come back. Cause we got oh, yeah. more we'll, to get we'll to. This. Yeah, we we I, got comments to come back. Yeah, I'm tight on time, but man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, yeah we but, do but before it. you go, we need to tell the people where they can find you at. For all the yes, fans over here yes. in the UK, Europe, Middle East, Africa, Asia, yeah. where can you go and find Chris? All of your stuff. Let them know. No, you can check me out um, on Twitter. Get all my news stories, all that. Twitter at Chris B Haynes, H A Y N E S, and on Instagram at Chris B Haynes N B A. So those are the two primary platforms you can find me out. My work on Yahoo Sports, y'all can catch me. Well, y'all can't catch me on TNT, but <laughs> I'm doing some, doing some, doing some Soon. I'll, I'll tell you guys this. I'll tell you guys yeah, this. Let me figure it out, man. Hey, I, I'll tweet out a couple couple video appearances on TNT so y'all can see it that way. That's what you do. Get, oh, get, it, get on the ground. Get the ground popping. Let them know. There's, yeah. a few people in this, there's a few people in this game that I've got tweet notifications on for. The usual suspects who tweet out the trade rumors and Chris is one of the other people because he breaks yes. the occasional news story too. Not even occasional, regular and, news stories. And Exclusive we got to say this because in Europe, in Europe, the man is the best dress. Besides being the best at breaking <laughs> stories, he's the best dressed in the business. I watch just dude. to see what he's wearing because he's <laughs> always, he's <laughs> always on point with the dress and his <laughs> shoe game. I ain't talking about sneakers. His uh-huh. shoe game is oh. off the charts. You're going to make me level yeah. up. I, I, oh, I ain't got yeah. it like Mo back there. Yeah, Mo oh, got, oh, like, that's, got a mask. That's like, that's, that, that's like. I'm gonna t- I'll tell you this. <laughs> when I get over to the States, I'm, I'm going to give you some competition, Chris. Because I take the drip serious. I'm comfy okay. today in a hoodie. But don't worry. We're, we're going to level up. We'll level up together. Don't worry, man. I'll give you some kicks. I believe you, bro. Hey, man. We get, we get a crack. But we thank you for your time. Thank you so much for coming through. We appreciate you sharing that insight with us. And we can't wait to have you back on the show. Appreciate you, my man. Yes, sir. Mo, BJ, appreciate y'all. Take care. Appreciate you, my Respect, brother. Respect, man.